Happy Thursday, everyone, and welcome into this community segment. It is Thursday, so we're talking with the one and only Thomas Watson. Thomas, thank you for being here this morning. Pleasure to be on. Happy Thursday, everyone. I would say a throwback Thursday, but we can't afford the rights for the 80s music yet. Yeah, we don't want to have to pay for too many things. We got a lot that we got to work on right now. And one of the things that you were working on recently was an episode of What the Truck. You are not limited to just the show Loaded and Rolling. You branch across all shows here at Freight Waves. And you were on What the Truck on Monday. Can you talk to us a little bit about what you and Dooner talked about on that episode? Well, it was Easter Monday, celebrated. Technically, Easter is always on a Sunday, but also the 700th episode of What the Truck. So big congratulations to Dooner and the team for that accomplishment. You won't get to see the thousandth one until like 2027. So it was a special moment, just like an eclipse. Uh, I was on the show talking about the market, uh, the you know movement or lack of uh, has been the actual current one. If you're in the dry van segment, it's rough out there. So big thing on spot market has been that dry van continues to underperform. We got excited over the holidays. Winter weather gave me hope. And then by the end of February, the hope was gone. I thought it would resurrect on Easter, but hope has not yet. So we are still waiting. In the supply chain world, it is not three days until you resurrect. It may be three months. So keep your uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> Thomas, who would you say are some of the biggest winners of the freight market in Q1 so far? Biggest winners of Flybed and Open Deck. A few few reasons. Dry van and reefer typically no touch, no driver assistance. Drivers back in, they get loaded, they leave, bada bing, bada boom. Open deck and flatbed, chains, straps, binders, tarps. It requires mostly drivers to do that. And if you remember the average age of drivers in their 50s, a lot of them don't want to do that. And so we continue to see a situation where for the flatbed and open deck segment, near shoring, more activity, more uh, you know industrial with in terms of manufacturing. We have the CHIPS Act, we have the Infrastructure Act. We have a lot of different things that require uh, the movement of flatbed and open deck. So when you think about even the genies, the lifts, the generators, the poles, the tarps, uh, anything coming from beams, you know, the Baltimore Bridge fell apart. That stuff's going to be transported with heavy haul and specialized equipment. And so, you know, there's a lot of demand. Now, we've seen a situation where on the contracted side, it's still healthy. It went from like 20%. We're down around 15-ish percent right now. Weather's warming up. But that's the one bright spot if you're in the truckload segment. Uh, the other one's reefer was the big decline. Their spot rates are still looking pretty good year over year comps, but uh, they're they're right around that five to six percent in terms of rejection rates and getting a little lower. And that's been one of the biggest things was that you know if you're a dry van carrier, maybe you want to go into reefer, maybe you want to buy a trailer. You know it's it's still a little more commoditization uh, compared to completely switching to something like a flatbed trailer. Because you have to imagine as well, if you have a reefer trailer, you can also double dip. If it's under like around 42,000 pounds or less, you can uh, steal some dry van freight. So, you know, keeping an eye out. The big question though for reefer, I know it's been the, the biggest loser so far. Uh, dry van was continuously a loser. So, I mean, they've been there like tender rejection rates below 5% for a hot minute. You know, January, we saw 5%. We got excited. But um, is will produce season impact it? We know that it does, but how many reefer carriers are there? So will it be reefer madness or will it be reefer sadness? That's what we don't know yet. I love that, Thomas. Maybe you need to go on an episode of Running on Ice with Mary O'Connell to talk about the reefer madness or the reefer sadness. But we're going to move on talking about Q1. A lot of analysts are lowering their expectations. What are you expecting or moving into Q2? What are you expecting to see here in Q2, Thomas? More sadness as well, unfortunately. So it really does depend. Uh, first off, if you have rail or LTL, analysts like you. Congratulations. That's partially due to the fact that your operations are more complicated. Uh, going back to when I told you drive in no touch point to point uh, compared to cross docking, transloading, putting them in various containers, Going to a railhead, these are things that require a lot more complexity. And so, uh, you know, naturally they're getting better margins and it's not like anyone, Thomas's trucking company, can suddenly get the money to buy up a small warehouse, set up an LTL operation, do this kind of mixed modal stuff. So truckload carriers that are mixed, think of your like JB Hunts, your Schneiders, they've got a rail exposure, they've got, uh, you know, some of them have bought up LTLs in addition to truckload. 
they're going to do pretty well. And that was their thinking as well. Why would you go from pure play trucking to other things? Well, because the trucking is like a, a five-year-old eating a crap ton of sugar. Sometimes you have a lot of energy and good times, and other times you feel sick, irritable, and pass out. And right now we're in the sick, irritable, and pass out phase of the truckload cycle. Now, for pure play trucking, think of your Heartlands and your Werners, headwinds more head wins. Now, when we see this, we're going to continue to probably hear analysts talk about, well, we're moving more to dedicated. Dedicated is like a poor man's LTL, but you're too poor to afford the actual distribution center. You're just providing managed transportation. But for your over-the-road stuff, uh, analysts are cutting expectations because, well, they're expecting lower revenues. So that's going to be the continued story that we're going to be hearing. And the big thing to watch for this is, are executives going to still say, second half of the year, as in by summer, it will get better. Or here's a fun one. Are we actually football analogy and a third and 15 scenario? And I'm just going to punt the ball early and say it won't get better until Christmas. Keep an eye out. I say, you know, it's really bad if you're punting the ball and it's third down when you still have another try, actually technically two tries if you go for it on fourth. But Thomas, you have a great show here at Freight Waves loaded and rolling every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Can you give us a Tell us who's going to be coming up next week on Loaded and Rolling. It's a fun one. We're going to be talking about uh, the impact in terms of drivers, technology, and uh, especially bigger trends with Neil McAvoy. He's a VP Business Development at C3 Solutions. They do cool software in terms of uh, yard management as well as dock management, uh, scheduling solutions. It was a really, it's a really fun talk because I think that you know we talk about driver issues, and there's a subset which is lack of utilization. Maybe my loads aren't good enough. But from point A to point B, a lot of these warehouses are still stuck in the 80s. So imagine this. You're a fully tech-optimized truckload carrier. You have end-to-end -end visibility. As soon as you pick up this load, you are golden. But you know what the problem is? When you go to pick up the load or deliver it, they tell you to check in, go to a lot, and wait for someone to knock on your door or call you. Yes, that's right. Or you have preloaded trailers. You say, well, Thomas, I'm finally doing better. I'm going to do preloaded trailer solutions. Uh, that way I don't have to wait. Well, guess what? They don't even check their trailer yards. And now a lot of times they struggle for many customers that are uh, not tech savvy uh, to figure out how to properly dock and do the scheduling. So there's a big challenge right now. This is part of the conversation we had that, um, you know, the technology is getting there, but how do we improve everything outside the warehouse? Other freight waves people have wrote about the robotics revolution, the cool Terminator style exosuits to help you lift in a warehouse. There's so much cool tech, but right now it falls by the wayside as soon as it hits a dock. So final thought here, this is the funniest part that I like to talk about. David Carell talked about how we can look to, uh, with MIT, look to airports. Because imagine this, imagine you treat an airport like a distribution center. Would you ever want to go to an airport and they don't know when your flight's going to go out? They just have a two-hour window. It goes out within an hour. And by the way, they're coming into all these gates, but like sometimes one airplane arrives early, so he takes the gate of the other airport. And so you're stuck waiting three hours to board your flight and you arrive like two hours early. Well, that's your modern day warehousing. Warehousing in airports are remarkably similar, except warehousing uh, does not have a need to care about its customers so much whenever uh, they're still going to have to show up uh, compared to an airline, where if it's a bad or really run airline, just go to another airline. So keep an eye on that. That's a really fun little analogy I like to throw out there because that really illustrates how silly our modern supply chain is and how much opportunity for improvement we have. You can become a shipper of choice by simply getting people out faster. Thomas, it's a pleasure as always. Thank you for joining us today for the community updates. Always a pleasure. Check out every Loaded and Rolling Tuesdays at 2 p.m. for the live show, Thursdays, 2 p.m. for the newsletter. We'll do it live. Do it live.